Hello. It's uh, 1 p.m. now and you're sitting in room 5. So if you have read the schedule right, that means you're in the Chaos VPN uh, CTF Gaming Network talk. So I'd like to get some information about the audience first. So who of you is involved in a hacker space? Who of you is involved in CTF gaming? That's a bit less, but also interesting. Okay, and who of you has experience with network? Good. Okay. Um, this talk is about Case VPN uh, uh, CTF gaming network. Who we are? Root. This is Jens Mücke. Uh, he's an OpenWRT developer. Uh, he codes for his daytime job. Um, and he has written a lot of the codes uh, in we needed to write. Then we have Virus. Uh, he's with DC949. Uh, he did the OCTF or work with the OCTF 1 to 5. Uh, he's, uh, layer 1 needs to be mentioned. Uh, I don't want to read all the slides. You can read that. Um, yeah, he's a, one of the co founders at Null Space Labs and did some other interesting things, especially regarding CTF, Capture the Flag Network, Hacking Networks. Then we have uh, Eric Taves. Uh, he's from the Chaos Computer Club Darmstadt. Um, he studied computer science. Um, he's working at the T TU Darmstadt now and is interested in cryptography, crypto analysis, and stuff like that. Uh, you might know his software uh, to break uh, WEP in less than 60 seconds. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then there's me. I'm from the Chaos Computer Club Hamburg. I'm an administrator for the daytime job. Uh, I played a lot CTF with the University of Darmstadt. Um, for example, the UCT, uh, USB CTF. Uh, some of you might know Cypher and DA Open. Uh, together with some people, I co hosted the CCC CTFs. And I like to travel hacker spaces and have some friends around the world in different hacker spaces which I'd like to communicate to. Any questions for the speakers? <coughs> so, I will uh, explain how we got to all of this. Um, so, has any one of you been on uh, Hackers at Random? Some? C2 or 3? Hackers at Random is a Dutch camp. Uh, hackers camp uh, in usually the swamps somewhere. This time it was not too bad. Um, we talked a lot about that it is a problem to uh, communicate on the network uh, between the different hacker spaces. Also, we wanted to play CTF and we were playing CTFs. But you know, hosting a CTF is a lot of work. And most of this work is the same work all over again. It's the network setup. So there was an idea born. Uh, we wanted to play CTFs in our rooms. Most of us had hacker spaces. Uh, and this required a VPN setup. And to reduce the work on that, we decided to make this VPN setup permanent, or wanted to have that permanent. Uh, if you don't have to set it up all over again, that saves a lot of work by doing a CTF. And you can understand that if you do a CTF, which is a lot of work, uh, you want to reduce the things that you have to do all over again, which is not too interesting. Like, it's interesting to write a service, but it's not too interesting to set up the network again and again and again. Chaos VPN, uh, we'll explain that. Uh, fulfilled most of the requirements somehow, but not all of them. And with KSVPN, we had a lot of uh, experience 
um, with that software and with Tink. So we needed to redo KSVPN. Okay. I think at this point I should explain KSVPN. KSVPN at that point was a meshed VPN um, that's used to host the Chaos phone, which is the asterisk phone service the Chaos Computer Club has among their spread hackerspaces. So we have a big asterisk system and we used Tink and some Perl code on some Debian boxes to connect them, all of them together and um, to have a phone system within that because you can understand that we would like to have a phone where, well, just we are listening. Okay. The involvement on the uh, idea, we need to talk on the 2063. Um, we're kind of leaving the shadow, like telling people what we are doing and we are planning to do. Uh, the things done there was the rewrite of the code to see. We'll explain the reasons, reasons after that. And we got a lot of people, a lot of more people involved in that. So, the idea. idea. We wanted to have privacy on the network. Uh, show you uh, don't want to have your internet access provider and his deep packet inspection looking directly in your packets all the time. Also, with the times that provide us, for example, fake DNS and other stuff, uh, which just leaks out a lot of information of the web pages the people use in the hackerspaces, we want to get more of that private. And especially the thing we wanted to get private is the traffic between the hackerspace. Well, there were virtually not was very few between those, but we wanted to have if we have private traffic between that private. The community, that all was to uh, connect the hackerspaces and our friends and the whole hackerspace thingy and to play Warzone. But the first step was to redo this network and then use this network to play Warzone on that. Jensen. The availab availability was a problem. Um, we want to have a setup that is really robust and has a solid uptime. So a lot of those VPN installation in the hackerspaces have the problem that they are, you might know that, working somehow. We wanted to avoid that. Well, speed, uh, if you do uh, you want, don't want to be limited by the VPN stuff. We wanted to have fast network. Uh, for sure there's some FTP and other tr data transfer maybe later going on. And also uh, with speed comes the latency. If you want to do uh, CTF and especially if you want to do VoIP, you need no load latency. It should be easy to use. So uh, maintenance not very complicated and uh, neighborly. Join your friends, block your enemies. So what we came up basically was a meshed, based, encrypted and authentic auth authenticated private network that administrates itself. I'm going to explain that. Uh, meshed. The meshed thing is the biggest difference in uh, compared to most VPN installation. Um, and meshed, everybody's communicating with everybody. So if you have set up tunnels and you have two spaces, you need one tunnel. If you thread a, set up a system between three spaces, you need three tunnels. You will see that this in the end scales with O, uh, o equals uh, N square. So Tink defines endpoints and not tunnels. This just is N, so scales way better. Um, the latency is better if the, all the hackerspaces just communicate to each other and not over uh, certain routing hops. Uh, you get a high bandwidth because you're just limited between those two connections and the connection in between, but you're not limited, for example, on the speed of some root hubs. We don't have a single point of failure in there on the network base. So if 
any node can die and just this node will be off the network, not the whole network. And very important, nobody will see the traffic from other people in the default configuration. If you want to, you can also fuck up this one, uh, but it's pretty hard. Any questions on that? Encrypted and authenticated. Uh, well, this is easy. Uh, you should want to have strong encryption that people who may be able to tap the line will not be able to do it while tapping the line. And also, we want to mask uh, the traffic details so somebody tapping the line cannot easily see what is going on there. Uh, you can do statistics of encrypted traffic and guess what's going on there, but well, I think you know all that. It's just better this way. And authentic authentication, uh, we want to know who we're talking to for sure. Um, private network is clear. We want to have uh, the private network to connect all this. Administrates itself. That is an important point because this is uh, the reasons that some earlier tries to set up a mesh between uh, and a network between hackerspaces and stuff like this went down. Uh, that basically means if a node joins the network, no other node should need to do something. Um, think, for example, that all those mesh based approaches in before uh, had the problem that if somebody joins the network, every administrator has to touch his contract files, which sucks and does not work, as you know that. And if you get a bit over uh, some time zones, uh, this will just not be very good. So the problem of Tink is keep the config in sync. And if you have a problem that can be solved uh, with writing a program, write it. So we did. Um, yeah, this was the network based around the case VPN before, who mostly run the VoIP of the CCC, um, had seven years of uptime. I think that's a pretty good uptime. Lesson learned from the first uh, version from the network. Uh, you sometimes in Tink have the problem that some administrator by mis mis mistake, this happens more often, or uh, somebody who will try to annoy you announces the wrong network and that is hard to get rid of. Uh, to explain that a bit, if you have a wrong network in your mesh cloud, the, which is a slash 24, you can announce to slash 25 this is more precise and then you can take over the information again. But this does not work with the slash, 20, uh, slash 32 obviously and we had some important servers with the slash 20, uh, 32 in the network. Also a poll was required and if you want to put this on an embedded device and our idea, idea was to have it on an embedded device, uh, if you put poll on, on an embedded device there's not a lot of space left on this embedded device usually. So, the software. Yeah, welcome. I hope you don't have a hangover from the party last night. So now it's a little bit more technical. So basically, uh, we had this awesome software called Tink, which do all the VPN, but we had to do something for the configuration to get that in a good state running. Um, basically what our software is doing is it wraps around Ting, provide a tone device which is needed for Ting, read the local config file and knows what it has to do, like which address it has to download the config. So it fetched the network config, so it knows about all hosts and uh, where it has to connect to, which IP address and that stuff. And then it creates the config file for Tink uh, with all the host files, all the up and down scripted, all that is needed for Tink to run that network and at the end it started. That's basically it. We do it a uh, rewrite so uh, the first version was done in Perl because it's easy to write it in Perl and it works pretty good.